What's up guys, Tim Halstead here for episode 25 of Building Up the Old 408 Cleveland. So I'm at the shop with Don Rodies here and we're finishing up everything, the short box all done. Uh, we measured the intake center line. This is in it, I think it's 105.5. Um, piston valve clearance we measured, 120 thousandths intake and 62 thousandths exhaust. So, sorry I missed out on doing that actual process at that time, but I don't want to go back through and put it back on there and measure it. Next time I'll do the video, the track boss will measure it and, and videotape it for sure. You can read about it, there's probably everybody else has videos on it too. But here's the heads, I'm getting ready to assemble these now. So I have the intakes, the titanium intakes. These are Ferrera exhaust valves. But here's the A3 heads, I got them set up so I can start put, moving them up, put it together. So I got the heads here, ready to assemble the valves and the springs and titanium uh, retainers. Thanks again, Mark uh, Chacon at Bullet Cams. I appreciate your sponsorship and the help of the parts. And uh, I got the stickers, we'll, we'll put them on. Once I get the heads assembled, then I can put them on a short block, torque them up. And then really it's just the intake, you know, and the front accessory stuff, the vacuum pump, pulleys, you know, the mandrel for the ATI balancer. That's another thing. I don't know how many of you guys have seen Cleveland's with vacuum pumps. I've never seen maybe one or two, not many, because no one makes anything for it. You know, I work with um, Steve at Star Machine when we were putting this together, and he has a bracket now that you can get to mount a pump on the cylinder head. It works nice. You can get the mandrel. I got that from ATI to match the balancer, and then I had to have Jones Racing Products um, cut down the mandrel to fit for the right length. And then I got spacers for them to space out for alignment for the belt, which is like a cock type belt for the vacuum pump. And it, it mounts up well. I'll show you some videos when we get to that point. So I got the intake in, and I don't use these kind of tools very often. So when I use stuff like this with springs, you know, just like doing the springs in your car, I'm cautious. You know, I take my time. I don't rush anything. I like everything perfectly square because I don't want this little spring to go off and take out my eye or hit me in the head. You know, I see too much of that. These kind of injuries at the ER. When you're working on something, <laughs> the things I've seen in the past. Or if you try something for the third time, you get hurt. I've seen that millions of times when people try to do some kind of activity. So what I tell you is if you can't get it the second time, walk away for 10 minutes and then go back to it. So I kind of got my back to you, but that's how it is. Got the locks here. I got it compressed. This is definitely a nice spring compressor. This is all bearing, rotates, adjustable here and here, makes it easy. I was telling you, Don's super stock Camaro, he was running at Indy this weekend. It was running like 965 with a 2 or a 3, and 965 with a 6. I mean, deadly consistent. But he told me his, what did he say? His spring pressures are like, I want to say 400 on the seat and 1200 open. Crazy. You gotta use something good and safe when you're doing that kind of work. So I'm going down through the cylinders. And I mark stuff one, two, three, four, just so I don't forget. Because sometimes you don't forget things. So I take the valve out. It's marked two that I marked out before to make sure that when I'm putting these in, everything matches. Basically, it's the same process. For me, you to watch me, like I say before, you fall asleep and get tired. 
but I can see the position on the table or the bench. I'm going to have to figure that out so I got the best optimal safe working angle. So, so let's keep going. Check it out. So here's where I'm at. I got a graduated cylinder all set up with 100 cc's of red alcohol because that way you can see it when it's going in the cylinder. I got the plexiglass cover with Vaseline to seal the combustion chamber. We're going to see what we can find out. You know, this isn't Rear Morrison. They probably have a much more exact way to do this, but at this point, we're going to get a good idea. Got to put it on the specs so I can see better. So here it is here. The meniscus is at zero. Let's see what we can do. Sorry to have my back to you, but this is how it is. Let's rock and roll. You got the spark plug in so you can take up the volume. Valves are in. Hopefully there's no leaking. We'll see how Morgan did on that valve job. And now I can see the air bubble there where the air is trying to get out. So we're going to put a little bit more in. Or actually, it's coming out on its own. This looks like it's at 50. So here's where we're at. We're going to check the CC volume of the intake runner. Um, again, use the colored alcohol. And, and I'm doing it just to get an idea where I'm at. Because I had an idea before I was at two, 258 last I remember. You know, with him moving the push rods, Morgan moving the push rods, and increased porting, I mean, the volume's got to be a little bit bigger. So we're going to check it out and see what we come up with. Sorry about my back being against you, but that's how it is. So I got 100 ml here. Meniscus is perfect. We'll start putting this in and see what we come up with. And like I said, I mean, this is me doing this. This isn't some professional doing it. And uh, I should hold this 100 without any issue as long as I can look at this camera and hold this in the right spot. And then we'll see and we'll get an idea of what we have. Now I want to make sure I stop here so we can measure this accurately. Okay, there's a hundred right there. So let's put this back, we'll refill this. So, me not monkeying around with this, I could have had the heads on and torque, but you know what? I talked over to my wife and she said I could finish it up on Friday, I have Friday off, so that's what I want to do. I might get them torqued out today though, it's still early today. say that's pretty darn close. So right now what do I have? About 
Let's see if we can put a little bit more. 68.2, so that's 268. This level, that's pretty low. And that's 269. So that intake port volume is 269 cc's. You can see it right here. Could I get a little more in there? Let's see. I'm going to be happy with 269. I don't want to make a mess. Sixty-nine point two. I'm calling it good. So let's check an exhaust and see where we're at. I think I was in the 140 range, 143 or something. Sticks in my head. Let's see what we have with this one. Now a couple of these are broke through from him porting. <clears throat> ain't a big deal because the head bolt's going through there, but obviously it's difficult to check. And I can tell you these are real thin, so. Let's see if we find out. It's good to see that it ain't leaking out the valves. Got a good valve job there. Down to 100. So there's 100 right there. Let's refill the syringe, or I mean this graduated cylinder. This head's pretty level on here, so. And right there is 46, 47. That's 48, 48.2, man, that's pretty darn close. I'm going to call it that. I'll see if I can go. I just don't want to spill it everywhere. That's it. That's, that's perfect. I got 149, so 149. I'm good with that. I don't know if you can see that. 